Hi there, welcome to this lesson. In this video, we'll see a real example of how to implement a search feature so we'll build a simple barbershop app where users can search for barbershop services. So without wasting time, let's jump right in. So the first thing that we're going to do is to create a database in Algolia. So to begin, we'll need a database that we can work with. So I'll go ahead and add a list of barbershop services within Algolia. And to create a database within Algolia dashboard, we can go ahead and click on data sources. And then we can click on indices. And then here we can create a new index by clicking on this button. And then we can add our index name. So I'll go ahead and type in barbershop. And once that's done, I'll click on create. And then we're brought to this page here. Once you're here, we'll need to add a list of barbershop services by creating or uploading database records. And here we're given a definition of what exactly is a record. And as you can see, it says a record is an object you add to an index and want to search for. It can contain a number of attributes. So we'll go ahead and click on upload records. And as you can see, you have multiple ways in order to add new records. You can either upload a file, you can use the API, or you can add records manually. So I'll click on the manual option. So the manual option basically allows you to add records in JSON format. And here we're given an example of how that JSON format should look like. But we'll need to add our own record within this empty box here. So I'll go ahead and add a new record like so. And this is how the format will look like when you add a single record. So this is a single service. And as you can see, we have the service name, which is header two. We have the price of the service, and we also have the category of the service. In this case, it's styling. So to add this record, I'll go ahead and click on save. And as you can see, we have one record within our database. And automatically, Algolia gives us an object ID, as you can see here. And I have one more service that I'd like to add for the styling category. So I'll go ahead and click on add records and click on add manually. And I'll go ahead and paste in the text. But now I'll edit this service name. And I'll change it to coloring. And then I can change the price to $15. And I'll leave the category as styling and then I'll click on save. And sometimes you may need to click on this refresh button in order to see the latest updates that have been made to the database. And after I have refreshed the database, we can see that the second record has been added, which is coloring. And that is confirmed by the number of records that we can see here. And I have two additional services that I'd like to add to the database, but these will be for a new category. So I'll click on add records and click on add manually. And now instead of adding a single record, I'll go ahead and add two records all at the same time. And as you can see on this example, the format should look something like this. So we will need a pair of square brackets like this. And within these square brackets, we will add our data. So I'll paste in the text like so. And then after the first entry, I'll add a comma. And then I'll go ahead and add another entry like so. And then lastly, I'll just go ahead and edit the details for these entries. So for the category, we want them to be for haircuts like so. And I'll just copy that and paste it here as well. And for the first entry, we're going to make this an adult haircut like that. And then for the last entry, we're going to make this one for students. So I'm going to say student haircut, like so. And then I'll just change the price to $25 for the first entry. And then maybe $15 for the second entry, like that. And then I'll go ahead and click on save. And then I'll click on the refresh button. And as you can see, we now have four records within our database. And now I'll add the last three services, but these will also be for a new category. So I'll click on add manually. Then here I'll go ahead and add the three services. Like so. 
So now I have quickly added our list of services. And as you can see, they all have the same category, which is beard grooming. And they have the individual prices as well as service names. So now I'll go ahead and click on save. And then I'll hit on the refresh button. And as you can see, we now have a total of seven records within our database. So the important step now is to place these services within their own categories in Algolia. Because as it stands now, Algolia just has a list of records, but it doesn't really know that we want to categorize them. So we will need to explicitly configure these categories. And to do that, we can go ahead and click on configuration. And then after scrolling down, we want to click on facets under filtering and faceting. So I'll click on that. And then here, we can go ahead and add an attribute. So I'll click on an attribute. And then by default, Algolia gives us the object fields that we can use as a category. So we can use the service name as a category. We can use the price as the category. But of course, we want to use this object field as the category. So I'll go ahead and click on that. And then I'll click on searchable. And then I'll click on review and save. And lastly, on this confirmation pop-up, I'll click on save settings. And after the settings have been saved, I'll click on Browse. And as you can see, Algolia now knows that we have these categories as they are listed here. So we have now completed our first step of adding and categorizing the list of services within our database. So now we're going to create a search feature within our bubble app using the database that we just created within Algolia. So the first thing is to drag and drop the Algolia simple search element on the page like this, and then we're going to rename it to perhaps services, since we'll be retrieving a list of services from Algolia. And then for the index name, it has to be the same name that's within our Algolia dashboard. And since our index name is called Bubble Shop, then we also have to insert the same name within this field so that it reads Bubble Shop as well. And then for the query field, it will need the value of an input field. So we'll go ahead and drop in an input field on the page like so. And then for the placeholder, we'll just rename it to search a service. Like so. And now that the input field has been placed on the page, we can go ahead to the property editor of the Algolia simple search element. And for the query field, we'll go ahead and insert the value of this input field, like so. So that means that every time a user types in a keyword within this input field, that keyword will be used within this query. Then in the next field, we have to insert the type of content. And here we can select Algolio result, like so. Then the next field requires us to list a list of object fields that we want to retrieve from the Algolia database. And the object fields refer to the category, the service name, and the price of this object. So because in our list of services, we just want to show the service name as well as the price, we'll go ahead and insert these object fields within the property editor. And as shown on the documentation here, the list of fields should be separated by a comma. So I'll go ahead and type in the service name as well as the price, like so. And now that that's done, I'll go ahead and add a repeating group on the page where we will show our list of services. So I'll go ahead and click and drag the repeating group on the page, like so. And for the type of content, we can select on text. And then for the data source, we want to select on the Algolia Simple Search Services element, and we want to click on Results, and we want to say Field 1, like so. So this basically evaluates to a list of texts from the Algolia Simple Search element. Then I'll just increase the width of this repeating group to 600, like this, and then I'll make sure that it's centered on the page, like so. And now I'll go ahead and add a group to the repeating group, like so. And this is where we will show the list of services. 
So the type of content of this group will also be text. And the data source will be current cells text. And then to make this group more visible on the page, I'll go ahead and add some styling to it. So for the background color, I'll select on white. And then for the roundness, I'll type in 30. And then for the shadow style, I'll click on outset. And I'll simply set the spread radius to one. And then for the box shadow color, I'll click on this. And then I'll simply dial down the transparency to 20, like so. So as you can see, the group is now slightly more visible. And then I want to remove the lines that are between these groups by removing the style of this repeating group. And then for the separado, I'll click on none, like that. And now to show the actual service names on this repeating group, I'll go ahead and add a text element like this. And then I'll click this to insert dynamic data. And then I'll simply say parent groups text. And then I'll just minimize the height and make sure that that is centered vertically like that. So now we can click to preview to see our changes. And as you can see, we now have our list of barbershop services with all the individual service names. And let's go ahead and test out the search feature to see if it works. So I'll go ahead and type in hair. And as you can see, all the hair related services come up. Then I'll go ahead and type in shave. And as you can see, all the shave related services also come up. And then I'll go ahead and type in coloring. And as you can see, the coloring service comes up. So this is great. We can now see that our search feature works and we have successfully inserted our list of services within this repeating group. So now we just want to add the price of each service within the repeating group. So within the bubble editor, I'll go ahead and insert the text element like this. But before inserting dynamic data, I'll go ahead and insert a dollar sign to show that this is in fact the price and not just a random number. And then just after the dollar sign, I'll go ahead and insert dynamic data and I'll click on I'll go your simple search services, then I'll click on result, and then I'll click on field two, since the price is the second field that we listed after the service name. And then after that, I'll click on more, and then I'll click on item number, and then lastly, I'll say current sales index, like so. And then for some styling, I'll go ahead and make the width and height of this element as 4040. And then I'll remove the style and then I'll change the font size to 14. And then I'll change the font color to this color here. And then I'll just center the text like so. And then I'll make sure that the text is centered vertically by clicking on this checkbox. And then to add a background color, I'll click on flat color and I'll click on this color here. But then we want to dial down the transparency to 26 like so. And then to round up the corners, I'll set the roundness to 30, like so. So let's now click to preview our changes to see how it now looks. And just like that, we have now added the price of each service within the repeating group. And that pretty much wraps up this course. And we'd also like to invite you to check out another course, which is called Building a Barbershop App with Algolia. And this course will show you how to use all the main features of the Algolia plugin. So not only will you be able to implement search, but you'll also see how to add, edit, and delete items using the plugin. And we'll also go over other features such as dynamic filtering, as well as recent searches. And you may also find this course under the related no code courses. And I hope that this lesson has helped you see how you can implement a search feature in your own bubble app using the Algolia search plugin. And thank you so much for watching this entire course. And from the Zero Code team, happy building.